The Florida Blue Florida Classic is just legendary for so many reasons. The tailgating, off the charts. The street vendors, they form a small city. The football game, always competitive, but the game inside the game is between the marching Wildcats and the marching 100 at halftime. There's no time for the concession stands because it is showtime. It's pageantry at its best. The cool stride of the drum majors, the precise movement of the Marching 100 Dirty Dozen Flag Corps, the elegant moves of the BCU 14K dancers. It all goes together to form one of the greatest half times on earth. The Marching Wildcats and Marching 100 are two of the most decorated HBCU bands in the country. Both have multiple appearances at Super Bowls, both have major parade appearances, both have been on several commercials, and the list goes on and on. On Friday nights before the Florida Classic, they have their own space. Orlando's Amway Center is where it all goes down as the two bands go head to head in an event that annually sells out and showcases high school bands from all across the state of Florida. It starts with not only the traditions of these two heavyweight bands, but flows through the directors. For BCU, Dr. Donovan Wells has been credited with accelerating the brand of the band to heights unseen before. Under his leadership, they have been featured on their own Netflix series and appeared on a Cadillac Super Bowl commercial in 2006. Their widely known song, Let's Go Wildcats, was even featured on an EA Sports video game. November 17th, you can catch the Battle of the Bands at the Amway Center and then the big showdown is November 18th, 3 p.m. at Camping World Stadium. The football teams have their journey and the bands, they have theirs. This is the road to the Florida Blue, Florida Classic, exclusively on HBCU Game Day. Nestled in Central Florida on the Atlantic coastline sits the reality of a vision of one of the most admired figures in American history. Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune envisioned a school Daytona Literary and Industrial Training School for Negro Girls to educate black girls and it became a reality on October 3rd, 1904. Dr. Bethune wanted to ensure a rounded educational experience so extracurricular activities were a part of the school. Along with overseeing the educational aspects of the school, she would also become the school's first band director, leading an all-girls band. After merging with Cookman Institute of Jacksonville, Bethune-Cookman began to grow. In 1970, a fiery band director by the name of Samuel Berry came and put the showtime into the band simply known as The Pride. In 1996, BCU's band staff would be joined by a band member who had marched under Berry, Dr. Donovan Wells. In one short year, Wells was promoted to director of bands. Since then, the pride has not looked back. Appearing at Super Bowls, major parades, a television series, and in commercials, it became the virtual front porch of BCU. An individual who was not familiar with Bethune-Cookman would be more likely to get exposure to the school through the many national appearances of the band. <laughs> In 2018, Netflix followed the exploits of the band in a series called Marching Orders. That opportunity opened even more doors for the thriving band. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated, undisputed, Marching Wildcats of Bethune, Cookman University, The Pride. Marching Wildcats put on a show. Every time we show up, we show out. Light them up, light them up. Mind talk music, let's all lose it. We've got commercials, Super Bowl, the movie, Drumline. There is one event that brings out the best in the Marching Wildcats every year. The Florida Blue Florida Classic. Not only do they have to prepare to face their arch nemesis in the FAMU Marching 100 at halftime of the game, but the Friday night prior, 
there is one of the largest Battle of the Bands events at the Amway Center, which requires immense attention. Wells says there's never a need to motivate his band to get ready for the Florida Blue Florida Classic. Well, I took over a band that had a reputation that mainly stemmed from the Samuel Berry era, the marching men, and that's what everybody knew. Then, you know, we had about a decade where the band existed, wasn't bad, but it wasn't what it could be, you know, so you had to kind of come in and, and, and change your mindset in everything, you know, not just performances, but academics, uh, conduct, uh, work ethic, conditioning, recruitment, you know, it's all of those things come together to, to have a band, you know, it's, it's just not, you know, you can get this band directed and everything's going to happen. And then uh, I had to get administration in the college to buy into what I was telling them this band could be. You, you don't have to convince the kids because um, they know every student I have in my band, every student Dr. Chipman has in his band, knows someone in, in our band and we know someone in their band. They might have went to high school together, maybe a cousin, maybe a sibling. So, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to, that's one game you don't have to talk about. You know, it's, that's, that's automatic. Let me tell you something. When we start putting the Florida Classic stuff together and everything, oh man, uh, there's no shortage of ideas, no shortage of energy. There's no shortage of uh, creativity. And uh, we've been working all year, but even, even the work ethic steps up, you know, so, uh, um, you don't really have to sell that game, you know, that's an interstate rivalry and, it, and it's been around for a long time. You know, in 1980, I marched in my first Florida Classic over in Tampa, you know, and, um, and, and did it for four years. And, um, and that, was a, that was an experience for me and I, I still remember it like it was last weekend. You know, I mean, getting off the bus, my first time going into a stadium, uh, actually performing in the stadium with that many people in it and everything. It, it was, you know, because I'm from a small country town in Virginia, you know, from Smithfield, Virginia. So to go to Tampa, and that was the old Tampa Stadium, and to see it completely filled with black folks and, and everybody getting along, you know, and, and, and you know, you had the FAMU side and the Bethune-Cookman side and, uh, and fam, you had so many fans. They were sitting on our side too, you know. So, but uh, but it was all good, man. It was, uh, and my parents came down. They came down for it, man. And um, and so uh, I have fond memories of, of the classic as a student, and I have fond memories of the classic as a director. <laughs> That was the first thing I knew about Bethune Cookman. The next thing I learned was about Dr. Bethune and her legacy. Um, but the Marching Wildcats, I mean, there's nobody that comes to a, a Bethune Cookman game that doesn't wait for the band. You know, I've got to, to know Donovan very well. Uh, what a great guy, just an institution himself. Uh, you know, what they mean to our university, what they bring to our university. They give the university swag, you know. We're lacking a little bit of swag right now, you know, and winning will help that. But uh, our band never fails us. Uh, there's one thing we can always brag about, is our band is better than yours. I need a bigger sound on, a bigger sectional sound on the concert number from Baritone. A bigger sectional sound, when you have the melody, it's a bigger sectional sound. Because when you're playing it, and then when it transfers over the trumpet, it shouldn't sound like trumpets is a bigger section just be a transfer, same sound, just same, same quality, just a different sound.
country of our nation, an HBCU tradition of really march 100%, our plan is more closer to 100%. When you, when you cheat on the marching, nine times out of ten, you're cheating on the plan too. Cadillac commercial, we were contacted by an advertising firm out of Chicago, Leo and Burnett. And they wanted to play off the movie Drumline and, and, and to have that kind of a feel going into the Super Bowl for that Cadillac commercial and it was going to premiere uh, during the Super Bowl. When they contacted us, um, you know, I told them, oh, sure, we could, we could accommodate you. I hadn't, really didn't have an idea what they wanted, but I just wanted to make sure that they understood that we could accommodate you. You know, I, I didn't, still didn't know what they wanted, but, but I, I was telling them, yeah, oh yeah, we can do it. Yeah, no, no problem. And when we looked at bringing the whole band to LA to shoot the commercial, the cost was astronomical. And they said, well, can we get a smaller version of the band? I said, yeah, but I said, but is that the impact that you want? You said you want the feel of drum line. And so we went back and forth about that because one thing I never want to do, I don't want to weaken the brand of our product, you know? So, um, and then I said, I made a suggestion to them. I said, look, if you really want to capture drum line, let's use our drum line just the drum line. And they said, do you think that'll carry over? I said, that's the name of the, of the, of the uh, movie. And I said, at the end, there's a drum line feature in battle at the end. So it's built off of the drum line. So that's how we got our drum line in, into that. Uh, we went out to LA, uh, we filmed, well, we filmed for three days to make the commercial. We had one day of rehearsal we filmed for three days. Each day was a different location. And, um, and then they flew us back, man. And uh, great experience, man. Great, just, just a great experience.
the most intense and nicest rivalry you'll find. Because, uh, you, you know, you Wildcats can't hate on Rattlers. Rattlers can't hate on Wildcats. You know, you, you got marriages that, that, that one is a Wildcat and one is a Rattler. You might, you go back, Wildcat might be in a church and a Rattler is the pastor. You know, Rattler might be in a church and a Wildcat's the pastor, you know. Wildcat might be working at the school and the, and the principal is a rattler. Rattler might be at a school and a, and a wildcat is the principal. So, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't hate. And, and that's what I love about it because there's a climate in HBCU sports and in sports in general and in this country. Everything is confrontational. Everything is mean. Everything is mean spirited. There, you know, we're going to play these people. We got to hate them. I can't hate Florida and them band because they have students that look like my students. And if I'm, you know, I shouldn't be in education if I hate students at other schools, you know. And I love every HBCU because the same mission and purpose that we provide to a cer certain group of students here at Bethune Cookman, every HBCU does to a certain group of students wherever they are, you know. So, hey man, uh, I love the rivalry. I take a, I probably take 50 pictures at the classic with rattlers, with rattlers. Hey, hey, Mr. Well, nice show. Hey, man, you mind taking a selfie with me? Look, my grandson wanted to, he like your band, want to take a picture with me. Hey, man, I, I love it. I, I really love it. And, and I think it's a, it's a good example for people to see uh, with college sports, sometimes it can get too intense. Uh, FAMU and Bethune Cookman has been able to keep it in perspective. You know, it's, it's still about people. You know, yeah, we want to win the game. FAMU wants to win the game. We want to be the best band at halftime. The 100 wants to be the best band at halftime. But is it worth killing relationships with people? You know, so we keep it in perspective. You know, we keep it in perspective. And I think that's why it has lasted as long as it has. Um, it's still the premier classic as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you're not going to find a halftime more exciting that gets more attention. And both bands, like, like I said earlier, they have a quality sound. You know, anybody can be loud. I tell my kids, anybody can be loud. All that takes is attitude. It takes skill to sound good. And so uh, you're going to have very, two very skillful bands at halftime. You don't see that often. The Florida Blue Florida Classic returns on Saturday, November 18th. Get ready to experience the greatest rivalry in HBCU sports as the Florida A&M Rattlers and the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats meet in Orlando. Don't miss out on the best bands in the land as the FAMU Marching 100 and the BCU Marching Wildcats show up and show out. Every play, every beat. Experience the Florida Blue Florida Classic. Get your tickets now at floridaclassic.org. Take a look at that. Let's get it going. All right, take a look at that. Oh, oh wow. Wow, man. That's in our chapel, I believe. That's the early 60s. Right. That is Howard Middle School in Ocala, Florida. Oh, okay. Were they here on our campus? 
You recognize that director? Is that? I can't. I can't. He's see. Gonna, he's gonna show him better. Okay. That's Sam Barry. That's Sam Barry. What? We call we called him Red Dog. <laughs> and, and and was was Sam Barry. See, that's his hair is cut much shorter. See, the first time I met him, he had a big red afro and stuff, <laughs> man. And uh, wow, man, man, this is history here for real. Because he Sam Barry recruited me. Wow. Yeah, that's that's how I got here. Sam Barry recruited me.